and welcome to Making Connections, an expert series presented by Brennan Industries. I'm your host, Kanisha Johnson. Today, we are joined by two guests. First, Chuck Connors, CEO of Omni Services. Hi, Kanisha. I appreciate you having, having us on. Thanks for coming on the show today, Chuck. Additionally, we're also joined by Brad Rico, Executive Vice President of Brennan Industries. Hi, Kanisha, and thank you for uh, putting this together for us. Glad to have you, Brad. So first of all, let's get to know the two of you a little bit. So Chuck, we'll start with you. Tell us a little about your company, who your organization is, and what they do. Yeah, Omni Services, we're uh, headquartered in, in Worcester, Massachusetts. We have uh, 18 locations, principally throughout the East, and uh, one in Canada, 17 in the USA and one in Canada. And we're basically a distributor, fabricator, actually slash manufacturer. And we've been in business since 1976. And there's been a lot of changes along the way, but uh, we employ about 128 people, actually 131 now. I recently, we added some people. Um, and um, we, we remain independent, we're family owned and uh, we're having a lot of great momentum and success in the recent recent years. That's great. And now, Brad, over to you. Can you give us uh, a quick overview of Brennan Industries? Well, just like Chuck said, we're also an independent company. We've been in business since 1953. So Brennan Industries is a manufacturer of fittings. Every type of fitting you can imagine, we manufacture and uh, from the lowest of low pressures to the highest of high pressures. Um, I think we have 120,000 different SKUs. We manufacture globally. We manufacture um, here in the United States, in Canada. Uh, we manufacture in the UK, in Taiwan, in um, China, in the good Korea. And uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we, uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do and we, uh, we pride ourselves on how we go to business. So. Um, we go to business through distributors. Um, we've been partners with uh, Omni and supplying to Omni for uh, um, many years. Um, but uh, how we started was through distribution, and that's where we continue to have a stronghold in helping distribution grow their business. Chuck, what does your company offer that is unique from your competitors? Well, I think it's the total focus we have on, on fluid conveyance. Um, a lot of distribution companies are, are kind of a mix. And for instance, in, in the pure uh, conveyance of, of any media, whether it be gas or oil or, or uh, water, deionized water, the, the many medias, if you will, um, we really are only involved in transferring and, and conveying the media. Uh, many, many companies are also involved in the propulsion or powering the media to, uh, and, and as a result, fluid conveyance takes on kind of a secondary uh, status, you know, uh, if you will, the, the, the real prime rib products for, say, a motion control company are the pumps and the motors that, that do propel the media. And uh, years ago, we decided that, that no one really focused truly on the conveyance. And, and there were lots of mistakes in the, in the marketplace. I mean, dangerous mistakes. Mm. And, you know, my partner and I, you know, we, we set out to teach the industrial customer the importance of, of fluid conveyance in and of itself. Great, that's, that's really interesting. And, and Brad, what, what would you say differentiates Brennan? You heard Chuck's answer and Chuck's answer was uh, very specific, but very broad. And one of the abilities of Brennan Industries has been able, um, and I say this, uh, um, no pun intended, but it's being able to adapt, right? We, um, we have to figure out ways to connect with our customers and identifying sure. what their needs and their requirements are is what helps us become a better company. And um, the more information we get and uh, uh, the more information that we're able to use and uh, better our solutions, and tailor those solutions to meet the expectations of the industry. I just want to comment on that. that mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't agree more with that. And, and uh, you know, ultimately, you know, we will have been successful as a company with a, with a customer when the customer views Omni as being on their staff. That really is, if you will, the end zone uh, that we strive for all the time. And, 
you know, when, when you have a good supplier or a partnership like Omni does with Brennan, it's, you know, it's the totality of that. It's, it's really the whole channel, the whole supply channel and, and the partners in it. So. Great. Yeah, Thanks for adding that. True. Now, Chuck, back to you again. Um, what are the biggest changes you've seen take place in the industry during your career? Um, I, I would say that distribution for the longest time had a bad name. I mean, you know, quote, middleman, you know, why do we have to pay a middleman? And, uh, you know, distribution's a necessary evil. And I think there was some foundation to that because, you know, back in, in the early years, in, in the, the early 70s, you know, it was, if you will, a pick and ship existence. And customers would say, you know, well, why can't I buy it directly from the, from the, uh, from the manufacturer? Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, distribution was, was locally uh, located near, near your businesses. But uh, overall, I think the value in the delivery wasn't necessarily striking. You know, where the shift now today is that, you know, it's a, it's a global market. You know, when it was a USA market and we made everything, that, that was one uh, type of existence. But now in the global market, we have, we, distributors are now de delivering value. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the big differentiator. And as a result, uh, distribution is now seen uh, as being very progressive. I mean, that's why uh, it's, you know, many uh, investment companies want to be involved in distribution because, you know, they have hard assets and they deliver a lot of value and help uh, end users be successful. So next, what do you see currently going on in the hydraulic components marketplace? and especially in hydraulic supply. Chuck, why don't you start us off again? I think the big four issues that we've all encountered, and it's unprecedented, is, is personnel shortages, raw material shortages, COVID, and that still lingers over our head, and logistics. I mean, I've never seen logistic jam ups like, like we've had now. Um, so. You know what are the impacts? It's it's inventory, the dollars. I mean, you you better spend. It's 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 very impactful on on cash flow. But what are the results? I think the the, the good results are that because of say for instance personnel shortages, companies that normally would have been vertically integrated and they made everything right inside their building, whether it be you know painting their product or or forming sheet metal or whatever. That's changing. Uh, so many uh, original equipment manufacturers, or what we term OEMs, they're now shifting to what I call, quote, design and assemble, so that uh, they run lean, more lean, and they get their product uh, arriving just in time. And basically, you know, between, say, a Brennan and an Omni, we manage uh, their channel and in, in, in getting the products to them. So it's, that's a big shift. That, that's a big outsource, and uh, I think that that's going to continue. And the second one, as a result of all this, are auxiliary products. I mean, that, you know, for the longest time, you know, oh, this product is, you know, n no alternatives. Uh, and out of necessity, uh, customers are now being forced to elasticize and, and to look at, at, at other products. And what comes out of that, I think, you know, some solutions. I think there's some staid old approaches that are in place. And, and I think that, you know, out of confusion can come progress. I really mean that. I definitely agree with you when you talk about those big four and um, finding strategies to be successful within those big four that you talked about. And if you look back over the last 20 years of us being in business, I think they're going to be writing books about some of the things that we've had to overcome and to get through. I mean, we've gone through the, you know, the great recession, as they called it. We've gone through um, the pandemic. We've gone through um, so many, um, so many issues. And you talk about logistics, you talk about um, some of these other things and dealing with all of them figuring out how to um, keep product and supply product um, so that you can meet your delivery requirements, Chuck. We've, uh, we've put together strategies just on that. And uh, it's been difficult, as you've mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. having inventory in place, 
is again, working with companies like yourself that provide information that we can help build our strategies around. We can start building our production um, requirements around and that, that flow of information between the manufacturer, between the distributor, between um, the end customers, it's all critical that we uh, play a vital role in um, that back and forth information. Yeah, yeah I, and I think on, on the inventory basis, Brad, you know, you really think about it that, you know, for years and years, the, the customer oftentimes was sharing, you know, in the burden of, of holding all of this product. And that's crazy. I mean, Omni Services, right. our direct labor and our direct overhead is about uh, connector products and hose products. And you know why a customer will be sitting on that same amount of, of of dollars and cents in his building is 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 just foolish. It's not good business. And I think that that's one of the things in the channel that that we're working on, and and that you you guys do a great job of of helping us manage that because I, I think you know that's where you know say a Brennan and an Omni really dovetail in terms of helping the end user. Yeah, yeah. We have to be on the same page now. Um, you know, we have uh, we have supply agreements that we've put in place to make sure that uh, um, you know Chuck and Omni Services have their products when they need their products, and our, our production schedules are built around that. Mm -hmm. um, the logistics, you know, what used to take um, it used to take about uh, eight eight weeks for us to produce a product. Um, transfer that product another four weeks on top of that. So 12 weeks, we would produce a product and have that production run complete and in our inventory. Now, um, with some of the logistics issues that have happened over the last couple of months to the last year, that 12 weeks is now 16, 24, almost, and in some cases, almost to an entire year of uh, scheduling. So. It, it has to be cohesive uh, partnerships. Wow. And Brad, think about over the years how at times manufacturers would really kind of not have a, a full disdain towards distribution, but they'd be very frustrated with them. And equally, you know, distributors become frustrated with, with the manufacturing suppliers. But, you know, now, uh, you know, what we feel is, you know, Omni needs to share in the burden. Part of the value we provide and to both our end user and to our supplier, like Brennan, is that we share in the burden by keeping inventory, you know, taking yeah. some of the money and putting it in. That's value in and of itself to you, especially when it gets a, a you know, deliveries become acutely long in lead times. So that's important. And, and you know, that's really where the distributor can, can play a great role is help the manufacturer during these times as well as the customer. Thanks for sharing that. So um, just a few questions left, starting with Omni Services. How does your company plan to recruit and retain good talent with the changing hiring landscape? Short answer, run a good company. <laughs> run a good company because um, your people talk, suppliers talk about you, and you, you get a reputation. And you know when that reputation is pretty uniform, that, that helps. And, and uh, you know, every member of your company is a recruiter. And I think that, you know, that that's how we approach it. And uh, I think, you know, when, when they talk it up, for instance, everyone in our company is paid in some, some way, shape or form on uh, performance-based pay, you know, whether it's uh, the least amount of errors in our warehouse, uh, every, every person has some form of performance-based pay. And, you know, what does that lead to? So when someone's saying, hey, you know, he's looking at this company, we have him speak to our people. And, uh, you know, what kind of a, of a culture and environment do you live in? And, and equally, recognition. You know, we recognize and we pay our people uh, on merit and on uh, performance-based. Great, so we may have covered a bit of this already, but where do you think much of this industry and this market is headed? Uh, Brad, we'll start with you. Well, that's a great question. You know, this, <laughs> this industry, um, we talked a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. We do think this industry is headed 
or a little bit of contraction. We do think this industry is starting to catch up with some of the other industries. Um, we, we've always been looked at as kind of a slow to sophistication or slow to technology industry. And we're starting to see major changes in that now where people are looking at artificial intelligence to make, um, to make decisions. People are looking at, uh, as Chuck mentioned, electrification. People are looking at different solutions to provide what we consider hy premier hydraulic applications. So um, the amount of technology that is coming into our industry, it goes beyond just the product. It goes into the processes and the systems that are, that are driving our industry right now. So um, we, we see that that will continue. And we do think that uh, um, putting a heavy concentration on adding more and more and more of that um, level of intelligence to our systems, to our processes, will enable us to meet the future demands of this industry. Great, great. So Chuck, Brad, thank you both so much for joining us and sharing your insights on the hydraulic industry. Uh, Chuck, we appreciate you joining us. Well, thank you again, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and Brad, thank you as well. Thank you, Kanisha, I also enjoyed it. Appreciate that. Join us again next time on Making Connections, where we plan to meet with the Regional Vice President of Hydraulic Supply Company. See you next time.